So I'm just sharing the fourth word of Jesus on the cross and uh, I'm going to read it out from the Amplified Version. And about the ninth hour, three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me, leaving me helpless, forsaking and failing me in my time of need? When I started looking at this um, passage, and it also is in Mark 15, 34, I began to realise the implications of what this really meant when he spoke these words. And in order to understand the depth of it, we have to understand, first of all, the devastation and depravity of sin. We can't get away from that. We also have to uh, really begin to grasp the immeasurable glory and holiness of God's love for us and the absolute need for a substitu substitution of the penalty of sin to be paid for us. And when we begin to get to the depth of that, we can't like wash over it, we can't make it lighter than it is. Then it's at this point on the cross when Jesus al has already been beaten, he's been abandoned by his friends, um, there's a lot that's gone on, but it's at this point when he's in darkness, the whole world is in darkness, that the Father turns his face away. And Jesus, for us, has experienced separation from God. When we look at our own lives, we know that we have either in the past, in the present, present or maybe sometime in the future, may experience some level of abandonment by family, friends, colleagues, whatever. But we never have experienced abandonment from the Father himself. I wanted to read something from John Stott, The Cross of Christ. And he's quoting some other theologians. I decline to accept any explanation of these words which imply that they do not represent the actual truth of our Lord's position. Up to this moment, though forsaken by men, he could add, yet I am not alone for my Father is with me, from John 16:32. In the darkness, however, he was absolutely alone, being now also God forsaken. In consequence, he paid a greater and more excellent price in suffering in his soul the terrible torments of a condemned and forsaken man. So then, an actual and dreadful separation took place between the Father and the Son. It was voluntarily accepted by both the Father and the Son. It was due to our sins and their just reward. And Jesus expressed his horror of great darkness, this God-forsakenness, by quoting the only verse of scripture which actu accurately described it and which he had perfectly fulfilled, namely, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? From Psalm 22, 1. So if you have been or felt abandoned, know that the one who was who was, did it so that you can never ever be separated from the love of God. From Romans 8, 35 to 39, nothing shall separate us from his love. So when we um, start coming up to Easter and reflecting on the profoundness of what Christ did on the cross for us, that point at which he cried out, my God, why have you forsaken me? From my perspective is the point where God turned his face, his father turned his face away from Jesus, his son, who was spotless and without blemish. Nevertheless, the father, the son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, never lost their unity. It was something that happened in agreement between the three of them because they loved us so much.